I have with me Lunell. Lunell is in the studio. She is a comedian, actress, and singer. She has appeared in So I Married an Axe Murderer. Mm-hmm. Murderer. So I Married an Axe <laughs> Murderer. <laughs> the Rock. Barat. And Think Like a Man. Thank you for coming in. One and two. I have watched you. Oh, you were in both? One and two, Think Like a Man? Yes. And do, do you think like a man in real life? I, I do. You do? And how does a man think? Well, I think a man thinks um, strategically. Yep. I think uh, men tend <clears throat> to sometimes overanalyze, and I, I tend to do that sometimes in certain circumstances. And I also think like a man in business. Oh, I'm, good. I'm, I'm about my business. And so were you raised that way? How did you be? Were you raised by your father and mother? No, actually I wasn't. And so how did you come to think like a man? Because I think all women, when they're becoming, uh, overcoming being a lady and becoming a woman, the mindset becomes like a man, think like a man, logical and unemotional and all that. Well, I think in the business, the career that I chose for myself, I was forced to actually lose a bit of my femininity and think like a man yeah. because it's a male-dominated business, the comedy <clears throat> world that I work in. And you find yourself, you know, on the way up, which I'm still there, uh, fighting often, fighting for your money, fighting for your accommodations, fighting right. for you know, to get people to be able to travel with your contracts and things like this. So, but if you, you know, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. That's right. So I uh, tend to ask for anything and everything I need. And I've been able to set a precedent in as much as my reputation precedes me. And I'm usually able to get what I need. Well, I have enjoyed watching you over the years of your career. That's good to hear. Yeah, you're real good. You are on the board of director of the Hollywood Diversity Association um, as of July 2016. What is that about? The Hollywood Diversity Association is a group that was formed to give more exposure to minorities in the film and television industry. In as much as people will say, oh, well, we can't find any black screenwriters or we don't know any Latino grips or we don't know any Asian prop masters. And that's just not true. There's plenty out there, but there's no um, nucleus, no, no, no um, site to go directly to find them. Mm. So through this association, we're building a platform where all um, industry people of all nationalities can pool themselves and be easily found. Oh, good. D- that doesn't include, like, the homosexuals and transgenders and all those people, right? It- it's just for black people. No, absolutely not. It includes—it's all inclusive. Why do black people always include, when it comes to civil rights issues and, quote-unquote, black issues— why do they always include the homosexuals and the transgenders and like all the crazy people? Because it doesn't have anything to do with being black, and well, they were never a part of the quote unquote civil rights movement. Why include them in the plight of black people? It perverts what black people are trying to do. Well, you yourself, being a black person, could answer that as well as I but, could. And you can't <clears throat> say they, you have to say we. Because we are but black. But I'm not for that. I don't. I, right, but you are black, but, but regardless. I know, so. but I would not include uh, the radical homosexuals and uh, transgender. I wouldn't include the crazy people in it. Well, uh, you know, crazy is subjective. You know, people may call you crazy. They may call me crazy. That's but why subjective. include them, though, in what you're trying to do? What well, is the purpose of that? I think that the Lord includes everyone. The Lord. And we have to walk in the footsteps. Did you say the Lord? I said the Lord. <laughs> and 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 I, I, I think that uh, some kind of way, us as black people, us, you, me, him, as black people have been a, a forgiving type of people and all-inclusive type of people. We have empathy for other folk 
besides ourselves. And I think that now, now me personally, I believe that our plight is separate from that of the, as you said, crazies or whatever like that. I believe that our plight is a separate one. So and why a allow one. them to jump on board whenever, especially when they want to push their agenda? The first thing they do is say, well, this is a civil rights issue, just like black people. They really don't care about black people at all. And black, liberal black, I don't do that because I see what's going on. And they say, oh, yeah, come on, on board. They try, Why? What's wrong? Well, I can only speak for myself. And in my heart and in my soul, I see the Persians, the Asians, the Jewish, the gays, the women, uh, the senior citizens, all fighting the good fight to just be treated with kindness and, 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 and equalness for pay and equalness in the workplace. And so in that context, I believe that we are all fighting the same fight. Of course, there are different situations that are applied to different groups and categories. Right. That's right. Um, you nominated, and I couldn't believe this when I read this, I was so disappointed in you. You nominated Maxine Waters, the Wicked Witch of the West, for President of the World. Were you joking? <laughs> Why well, would you do that? Well, obviously, because you cannot be the President of the <laughs> World. You know, so, yes, I was tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> but I'm quite fond of Maxine, politically and non-politically. I remember when I was in Oakland, California, and the, as they called them, the Rodney King riots, which were really not the Rodney <laughs> King riots, they were the verdict riots, um, were going on down here. And I was, you know, much younger, obviously, and that's when Maxine first came on my radar because she was out there in the streets, in the trenches with the people, and said that she was angry and wanted to throw a brick as well. I had never heard a politician say anything like that. I'd never heard a politician say anything that remotely expressed the feelings of the people in the street. And that's when she first came on, on my radar. But I, I'm not surprised that she wanted to throw a brick. <laughs> because Maxine Waters is ghetto. She's loudmouth. And if you notice, she's been in office over 40-something years and South Central L.A., her district over that area, three. yeah, something like that, yeah. is worse today than it was before she became congresswoman over that district. She offered black people a project. She said once in a speech, the Republican Party wants to tear down the projects, but I'm not going to let that happen. Not only am I not going to allow them to tear the projects down, I'm going to be a more for you. And the blacks went, yeah, praise the Lord. Keep us in the project. <laughs> and Maxine is living in a $4.3 million home in the suburbs. Her husband made buku money sitting on the board of a bank. Her daughter made buku money. Why would she offer blacks less than what she would offer herself? Well, I think you can make an offer. It's up to people to accept the offer or reject <laughs> the offer. Now, you can build more prisons. It's up to you whether you go into that, that prison That's or not. right. So even if they build more projects, or, you know, that's up to you whether you want to stay in there or not. But should she encourage them to do it right? You know, take care of yourself, work hard, save your money. Why do you speak of black people in the third person? Like well, you're not included in the... Oh, uh, because I... Um, I'm black, but I'm a Christian. I'm an American. Right. And I don't identify just with black people no, no. or white I, people. I get that. Or, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> However, you can't exclude yourself from being black. Because if you were pulled over on Pico Boulevard in an hour, the first thing they're going to see is not your Christianity and not your you know, political sense, they're going to see you as a black man. That's something you can't really hide from. And what does that mean, though? Well, that means that you're going to be, no matter what your stance is and no matter what your 
faith is. That's not what's going to, what you're judged by at first sight. I know, but once, I, <clears throat> once I'm stopped by the cops, I do what they say. I show my license. Right. I show my insurance papers. And they say, and I, I, and I speak, uh, you know, fluently and <laughs> correctly, and I don't right. bad mouth the police. And that has never stopped anyone from being drugged out of the car. No, that's not true. I've never been drugged out no, of the car. No, not you. Uh, but there's plenty of people who have complied with the police exactly, and they still No, get, that's not true either. Yes, that is no, true. No, absolutely yes. not true. Mm -hmm. The reason that they were taken from the car is because they would not follow the instructions. No, of that's the, not, not and you in know every how, case. You know how black people loud mouth, they go off. And Latinos yeah. and yeah. What, drunk white folks and <laughs> a lot of folks. I, I read that you are excited that a sister, Megan, is it Marco? Marco. Marco and she's engaged to Prince Harry. Um, and she is part black and part white, right? Yeah, half and half. Why are you happy about that? Just like in Hollywood here and in Washington, D.C., it's time for, you know, a little change in in the matrix. You know, this. Um, it's time for Buckingham Palace to <laughs> get with the program and... Let some non-white bread, royal, you know, <laughs> staunch, uh, regular people in, like Diana, was a commoner, you know? Right. And she got in there and made a huge difference in the monarchy and with what she did with children and, and things like this. And I just think that it's time for everybody to loosen up a little bit over there in the palace. And it's not the first. I mean, Queen, what was Charlotte or whatever was mulatto, as they call it. And she was um, married to a royal, I believe, way back, 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 back. <laughs> so they, they didn't let another one in until now. And plus, black people like to get excited when we see a come up. At, um, I said no to this engagement. That uh, he based should, on her nationality. No, he should call it off and not do it because this woman. She's an angry woman. She's been married before. She's older than him. Yeah. So she's like buying a used car. Prince Harry has never been married before. He doesn't know how to deal with an angry black woman. He is a fundraiser, and so he needs to marry someone. Uh, a little younger than him or his age, who is a fundraiser, who's never been married before, you know, never had children. I don't think this woman had. Does he have children? No, no children. Yeah. And so she's older, and a man should never, ever, 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 but never marry an older woman. He's married his mother. And so he's going to have a mother-son relationship. It's not going to work. Well, he doesn't have a mother now, does he? He will now with her. Well, maybe that's what he wants. <laughs> so are you okay with him marrying a woman that's older than him who's been married before? Because women who's been married before are already angry. That's why they're divorced. And, 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 and the and same goes for, for men who've been married before, right. too. They sh because women should when marry a woman men. and a man break up, a woman is devastated before a man is catastrophic. And we can get over it. We still know where everything is in the house. But a man having to pick up the pieces after a divorce is pretty much a disaster until he can pull himself together. But that's and a I'm weak gonna, man, though. Comment, that's not, a real man don't have a problem like that. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's your opinion. And no, you no, no. Right weak men whimper like that. That's your opinion. Divorce. That's your opinion. Uh, but let me say something on. about the used car. Right. Or a... Rescue dog, for, for, for example. You can get a brand new puppy that's, you know, untrained. It's going to chew up your shoes and pee all over the house. Or you can get a dog that's been around and knows how to behave and knows not to pee in the house and knows not to chew up and it could be the best dog you ever had. You could buy a brand new car and it could be a lemon. You could get a used car, and God bless, that car might carry you through your life. If he decided that, you know, 
he wants to step out of the box. See, he's been the oddball son all his life. He's the redhead. They thought that he was Diana's lover's son. They thought he wasn't really Prince Charles' son. That's why we he deserves a good chance in life. He should marry fresh. I think his chance in life is already set in stone. As far as family, you know, as far as marriage, do you agree he should marry men and women who have never been married, who don't have children, should marry fresh? They shouldn't marry has been. But people who've already had problems. Some people need a little guidance. Maybe Harry wants the knowledge of a mature woman. Oh, that's I not was trying good. to explain that to your engineer over there about the. <laughs> <laughs> about the uh, <coughs> benefits of being with an older woman. <laughs> that, uh, there can be lots of... She's not that much older than him. Well, how much older? Is, is, is I think she? she's like three years older than oh, him. Oh, that's light years, right? It's nothing. No, women tend to mature in a different kind of way than right. men do. Right, and maybe he and they wants know how to manipulate woman. young men like that. Well, then it worked, didn't it? No, it's not going to work. It's going to work right up into that. I'm going to have palace. you back. When they have a divorce. Okay. Because it's not going to work. Well, they can have a divorce, and they can have three little nappy-headed children <laughs> or whatever they want to do. But I'm pulling for her, and she didn't come from the hills of Calabasas. Another her mama problem. lives in Baldwin Hills, which is a wonderful area yeah, it is. filled with great people and in this relationship with her mother and father, it looked like the, if I may be blunt, it looked like the white father was the piece of shit, and the mother was the one who carried Well, we the, can't curse on the radio sorry. TV. <laughs> so sorry. let me ask you this. We finally have a classy first lady back in the White House. Who, Donald? Donald's wife. And oh, I thought you meant Donald was the classy first lady. He's all he acts one, like No, he's man. But let me ask you this. But Michelle, Big Mama Michelle, disgraced the country by hoochie mama dancing, wearing all these long short sleeves and just carry it on. Were you embarrassed that the first black woman in the White House turned it into a ghetto? Um, I was absolutely not. I think that Michelle Obama is the epitome of class. Oh, Stop. Lord. let me finish. Uh, uh. Class, style, and uh, poise. I believe that she has the right to wear short sleeve anything How she about wants she to. She has no class. She well, you're ghetto. first lady. I've seen her vagina. How about she that? She wasn't the first lady at the time. Well, she is now. But and and so what you now, do, she's a what you do lady. in your life. Follows you throughout your life. Unfortunately, it does. It does. But at least we she, never even saw Michelle in a bathing suit in the whole eight years she was in the White thank House. Thank God for that. Well, I'm sure she has a much better body than <laughs> Melania, whose body I've oh, seen. Oh, no. No, no, no. Melania have a great body. Well, she you're partial because you like white women. No, I like all women. No? No, yeah. Partial to white women. I got to ask you about Colin Kaepernick. Oh, you changed that subject. No, no, no. I like Are you all, married? No, I oh. like all women. Why aren't you married? Well, I've been engaged twice. And what happened? And as soon as I got engaged, they became controlling. Mm. And I'm not going to let any woman or anyone control me. What about and, a man? Would you let a man I, I would let no one control me. No one. I was raised to be very independent. That's a good thing. Do what's right. Treat people the way you like to be treated. Work hard. That's right. And men who allow women to control them are wimps. Look at Barack Obama, the father messiah. He was, he called himself the first feminist man. Now, you know he was weak. Michelle, like, rolled him like dough. Michelle's a little older than him, too. Huh? See there? I told you. She, she, that, neither one of them are divorced. But you agree that that doesn't mean that get a divorce. It doesn't mean that they're happy. Uh, he's extremely happy. Oh yeah. And I would rather wake up to Michelle than Melania any day. Would you agree that Obama was weak? No, I would not. Yeah, you would. No, I wouldn't. I'll ask you off camera. Okay. Are you as disappointed but not surprised as I am at the black football players who have? built a career playing football, uh, anywhere between 400 to 600 of them have criminal records, and yet they've been able to play football, make buku money, 
And to show their appreciation for that, they are turning their backs on the flag, on the country, on the fans, on their bosses. The president said, the great white hope said that, fire the SOBs, and I agree with him. Do you agree with us? Are you out of your mind? What, what do you, you mean? You must be out of your mind. Why do you say that? Uh, the, 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 now, 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 let me preface what I'm about to say by saying, I think if they were going to get fired, they should have got fired when they're doing things like beating women, fighting dogs, doing drugs, um, running through prostitutes, things like that, which are morally unethical if you're going to represent a major football team in the United States of America. That's right. I agree. But for taking a stance against police brutality, which is what is not about the flag and it's not about the song. It's a stance against police brutality and people getting killed in the streets when you can just as soon shoot a person in the foot and take them into custody as shoot them in the back of the head. That is what the protest is about. And everybody seems to want to lose sight of that and make it be about something that it's Nobody, not. It is about that. And uh, Colin Kaepernick said he won't honor the flag of a country that oppresses black people and people of color. So it is about the flag. And doesn't he have the right to do that? Not at work. Take that mess to the hood. Not at work. You do not have a right to go to work, get him paid. You promise the boss that you'll do an eight-hour job. You get buku money. You don't have the right to go to work and protest. This is exactly why I work for myself. But do you agree with that? No, I do not. You think so? If you hire someone and they have some phony issue like police brutality, which phony doesn't phony issue, yeah, which doesn't exist, by the way, would you want <laughs> them to come to work and rather than doing their job? They go to kneel at work. What you would you know do? That I know that you don't even believe that. By what? You know that I know that you're just saying this for the radio show. No, no, no. Because if uh, you no. think that police brutality is a non-existent issue, then uh, uh, I, I I feel sorry for you. It is a non-existent issue. Black Americans are su are suffering. Not all. Not all. Not all. But most. Black Americans are suffering due to the, 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 the failure of the family, the destruction of the family, and the lack of moral character. And how did the family get destructed? They gave in to the government under Lyndon B. Johnson. They said, okay, we're going to give you a welfare check, but you can't have a man in the exactly. house. Exactly. It was systematic and, genocide to break up the black family so that there could not be a man in the house. Right. And we're going to take all the extracurricular activities out of your schools, by the way. But what was wrong with And we're going to drop drugs down, and we're going to let you go for it. And so what's wrong? And then they, the blacks decide to follow the so-called leadership. Us blacks, brother. So they stop thinking uh, for blacks. themselves. What's wrong with black men and women that they would allow the government to seduce them in that way? Well, I think because since slavery, we've not had any therapy. You have a <laughs> you you have a a country that has raped, pillaged, beat, drug, de degraded us as a people ever since we've been here. Everybody can say, oh, my parents came to Ellis Island and my parents came from Italy and my parents came from Yugoslavia and they came of their own fruition. We were brought here. We don't have our own religion. We don't have our, we do uh, have we, our, we Christians. don't have our own religion. We're Christians. We don't have, no, no, sir. What? In Africa, if we came from Africa, we were not Christians in Africa. Where were you? There was another religion, the Yoruba religion, and all that type of stuff that we had. That's that why was Africa ours. is so screwed up. And we but don't me, have a we don't have a language. Let me ask you this: um, um, If what you just said is true, if why were blacks doing better prior to the civil rights movement than they are today? How were they doing better? They have families. They work hard. They have black universities. They didn't hate one another and hate the white man. They believed in God. They were men and women of character, and now they lack all of that. Because it was a 
it's, it's it's all in the in the grand scheme of things, the plot. America but has been so afraid dumb? of black men ever since they brought them here, and pro- probably the the hatred America of the is fact that a- the white women don't want anything to do with white men anymore, and they're so enthralled by that black skin and that <laughs> black sexuality that the white man can't stand it, and the whole. Plot is to get every black man with a number under their neck and on Nobody is afraid of black men. Not even Everybody a black woman. Is afraid the of only black people women. who are afraid of black men are the decent folks who are trying to earn a living while the gangs and the drug dealers and all of them are attacking and killing them. Are there no decent that, gays? Is, are there no decent Latinos? It? Are there no decent black what, women? What is it about black men that they need to be afraid of? They well, don't you produce know now, would you? They don't produce anything. <laughs> they don't raise their children. They don't get married to their women. They don't take care of their I own community. The white people listening what? don't even believe what oh, you're saying. Look around you. Are there not black firefighters up there fighting that fire right now? Right. Are there not black people feeding and they live hungry in, people right they now? They live in the suburbs. What? Uh, you don't know where they live. <laughs> Let's do, go to the busy phones. You can't live in the suburbs on a fireman's pay. Let's go way. to um, Charles out of Michigan. Charles, thanks for calling you on with Lunell. Hello. Good Hi, morning, Charles. Charles. Hey, what's going on, peoples? All is well. Oh, she's as well. That's beautiful. I remember when I first saw you on TV, and I thought you were joking with the the way you responded. I thought you were really joking. Are you talking about me or but, Lunell? Yeah, I'm talking about you. Okay. Uh, Je- what's your name, Jesse? Yes. I'm talking to you, Jesse. I couldn't believe it. I thought it, I bust out laughing. What's your question, was, Charles? My qu- <laughs> my question is: How can you ridicule a brother? <laughs> that's putting all his money on the line. He has a family like me, you, and that sister over there. But for him, it was more important to put that on the line because he wanted to stand for something. Who are you, you referring to? Colin. To, the, to the brother, to uh, the 49ers quarterback. Oh. That's taking the knee. He that's is, what y'all talking about, His name right? is Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I never <laughs> can pronounce his name. Yes, you can. But um, <laughs> that's what y'all are talking about. So I'm saying, he, you as a black public figure, he, all you doing is ridicu- ridiculing and putting us down. First of all, he's not my brother. Well, Secondly, he, he's an ex. He's, hold, hold on, on Charles. He's, hold he's, on. No, you, no, hold, you hold on. I got to run. He is, he is an ex quarterback backer. He's not fighting a real issue. So, and I'm supposed, I'm supposed to correct him when he's wrong. Why is it that when? Black people correct other black people or don't go along with their mess, they are accused or call sellouts. Why do you keep referring to black people as if you're not one? Well, I'm not part of the ones who are in that fallen state. Well, you still have to say we, brother. No, why? Because you you are in, you're excluding yourself. I used to be in and that by, fallen by, state. And by virtue of your skin. You no. cannot exclude yourself. No, no, no. I know you would like to. But <laughs> I you used to be a that. part of that fallen state, but I overcame. God took the anger away from me. And, and, and what did and, he put in, in it, its place? Love. Love for who? All people. What about black people? All people. What Can, about raggedy black people? All people. Do you love them? I love all people. Why do you talk about them so Because badly? I love them. I tell the truth about them so that they can overcome. So let's see. Is, is it <laughs> Selena? Yeah. Selena out of testing. Selena, are you ready? Uh, it's Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Oh, she, they have S-E-L-E-N-I-A here, but it's Sonia. Go ahead, Sonia. Yes. Hi. Uh, good morning, Mr. Peterson. Good morning. Good morning, Luell. Lunel. I want you to know, Lunel, that I love you Lunel. very much. I'm Lunel. so gl- Lunel. Yeah. <laughs> so glad that you're there on the show. Thank you. You are the one that can put him in his place. <laughs> I am so glad that you're there because you can do this. Sonia, where's my place? I'm so, I'm, 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 I'm so glad that you finally told him that he's black. He's in denial. <laughs> he's not in but denial. But that, that's my comment. He, well, he can't deny. He can't deny that skin. I'm into what is right, not color. Well, you why, why the, do you always when when you refer to blacks? Why do you always exclude yourself? Like say them, 
They, you are black, I'm, and why I, do you call blacks out of their names? That's not nice. What do you mean call them out? What do you mean call them out of their name? Thugs. Because you call them thugs all the time. Um, um, Lunell, when black men are killing one another, raping, robbing, uh, raping black women, killing innocent children, selling drugs in the communities, are they? Thugs or not? There are no more thugs well, than the white kids that white, are mass shooting, going into churches, shooting people, white going into movie Lin- theaters, Linnell, shooting people. Linnell, Why do you Linnell. guys always compare yourself to the white people? Why do you do that? To white people? Yeah. <laughs> I don't compare myself to um, anyone. You compare us to white people. No, I don't. You, exactly. you, you exalt. Linnell, I'm, I'm going to hang up, <laughs> no, okay. but put him in his place <laughs> while you're there. Okay? You have a wonderful day, sister. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. I wonder where's my place. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. To... <laughs> I hear black women say that. I think what they mean by in your place, shut up, don't speak up, and let me just do my mess. No, that's what oftentimes people would like us as black women to do is shut up. Like A whole saying, lot of people and, and, like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. And you know why, right? And you, uh, no, I don't know why, and you don't know why either. Look. Yeah, what does that mean? Black women are always yapping. Well, we have opinions. <laughs> we have minds. <laughs> Too we many. Use them. Too many. Let me ask do you believe that there's such a thing as white supremacy? Absolutely. And where's the proof I of it? I believe that they believe there's a such thing as white supremacy. Where's the proof of but it? But in the eyes of God, nobody is supreme over anybody. Where's the proof of it? I also believe. There's a huge thing called white privilege. Where's the proof of it? Where's the proof of it? Yes. Well, they have organizations and websites dedicated to white supremacy. They have black people doing that, too. Oh, what is it called? Black uh, Black Panther, New Black Panther, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. It's not supremacy. Uh, that's the same thing. No, it's not. Well, with why is it, when white people do it, it's supremacy. But when black you would people have to do get a white not. person in here to answer that question. Okay. I'm not white, never wanted to be, never will be, and I can't speak for all white people. Have you ever dated a white man? Absolutely. And and did you like it? It was awkward. And, and why? Because at the time, uh, when I did it, like over 20 years ago, um, I lived in an all-white community. I was... Un- unlike your perception, uh-huh, you moved was, out of the hood. My parents moved me out of the hood to the white community to get me away from the drugs. They took me where the better drugs were, where the more accessible <laughs> drugs were, and where the white boys were Amazing. who wanted the same thing that Prince Harry does. Lunell, thank you for coming on. Will you come back? I don't want to leave now. <laughs> but, yes, I would absolutely love to come back. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to take a break, folks. When I come back, I'll take some more calls. We Will you let them know my, 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 yes, my tell Instagram? Them. My Instagram and Twitter, if anybody would like to contact me, is simply at Lunell, at L-U-E-N-E-L-L. Please write me. I write back. <laughs> 